Today's tutorial will be a beginner's introduction to vector nodes and pads in Inkscape, which is important to know because they define the structure and contour of vector objects. Typical imagery is made up of lots of tiny little colored boxes known as pixels, whereas vectors are made up of nodes and pads. So let's try and make sense of this. To get us started, I'm going to grab the rectangle tool, and I'm going to hold the control key and click and drag on the canvas to draw a square. Now I'll come up here to the path menu and I will select object to path. Now don't worry about what that does just yet. We'll go over that shortly. But for now, I'm just going to grab the nodes tool, which is located up here. And if I zoom in on this object, you can see we now have four nodes, one on each corner of the object. And these nodes define the shape of the object. So if I were to click and drag these nodes and move them around, you can see it changes the shape of the object. So let me put that back in place, and I'm going to make this a lighter shade of gray so we can see a little better what I'm about to do next. And the line, the edge of the object that runs between the two nodes is known as a path. So I can click and drag on that path to change the contour of it. And when I do that, we should get these handles that appear at each node. Now you could take these handles and use them to further edit the contour of the path. So if I were to take this handle and move this up, I could take this handle over here and move this down, and I can edit this further, and now we have a waving path. So I'll come down here to this bottom edge and do the same thing. I'll click and drag this path and bring that edge up, and I'll take this edge, bring this down, and I'll use these handles to edit that further. And now what I'll do is, I'll click and drag over these bottom two nodes, and I'll click and drag them up and move them up to about there. And now we end up with what looks like a waving flag shape. Now, if you want to add a new node to your path, you can just hover your cursor anywhere over the path and double click it, and it'll add a new node that you can continue working with and editing. And if you want to turn that node from a corner node into a rounded node, you can come up here to the tool settings menu and click on this button that says make selected nodes smooth. And when I click on that, you can see what happens. It turns it into a rounded node. And with a rounded node, you have two handles that run parallel to each other. And you can move it around like that and you'll see it always maintains that rounded aspect of the node. Now, if you want to change that back to a corner node at any time, you could just choose the corner setting in the tool settings menu. And you'll have to click on it twice to get the flat edges again. And if you want to delete that node, you could just press the delete key while you have it selected. Now, if you want to make this rounded edge straight again, you could just take these handles and bring them back onto the node and just drop it on top of the node and then it'll be gone. Or as a shortcut, you could just hold the control key and click on the handle and it'll collapse it down like that. So now let me make this object white. And if you can see what happened there, the path is no longer visible because we have a white object on a white background. It's still there, it's just not visible because of the color. If you wanna be able to see your path when you're working with an object like this where it's not visible, you could come up here to the tool settings menu and click on this button that says show path outline. And if I click on that, you can see it adds a blue outline where the path is and I can continue editing this path as needed. Now bear in mind that this blue outline is just an indicator. It's not actually part of your artwork. Now let's have a closer look at this in a working context. I have a simple illustration here that's made up of a series of simple shapes, and I'll include a link in the description of the video to where you can download this SVG if you want to follow along with what I'm doing here. But if I grab my nodes tool, and I click on each of these shapes, you can see that they all have nodes just like the other shapes that we created. And if I click on this node, you can see we have our handles and I can move it around just like any other node. Now, if you notice, some of these objects are layered on top of the other objects. So for example, this object here, you can't see the path all the way because it's behind this object up here. Now, when you're working with complicated illustrations, where you have lots of objects overlapping each other, sometimes you need to be able to see where the paths are so you can know what to do when you're working on them. To do that, we can go to the outline display mode. So I'll come up here to view and I'll go to display mode and I will choose outline. 
And what that does is it works sort of like an X-ray. It shows you all of the paths of your vector objects on your canvas, even where they overlap with each other. Now, the downside of working with outline mode is that you kind of lose the visualization of the artwork. So what you can do is you can go to view, display mode, and choose outline overlay, and you get a little bit of a blend of each. You have the outline mode, but you also have some aspect of the color fill remaining so that you can still visualize what you're working with. So let me go back to outline display mode, and I'm going to select these objects. And I'll right click them and go to duplicate. And I'll move this duplicate copy off to the side over here. Now, if I have these objects selected, I can go to path and select flatten. And if I deselect that, you can see what happened. It removed the overlapping areas from the paths. So now we have a series of individual paths, none of which overlap each other. Whereas over here, we still have the overlapping shapes. Now, if I go back into the normal display mode, you can see they both visually look the same, but if I move this object out of the way and move this object out of the way, you can see that they are two very different paths. These objects over here still overlap, whereas these ones are just separate paths. So now let's go back to that object to path function that I mentioned previously in the video. I'm going to grab my circle tool and I'm going to hold control and click and drag on the canvas to draw a circle. Now, if I go to my nodes tool, you'll notice there's no nodes here. Instead, we have transformation handles. If I take this handle and move it, you can see I'm changing the properties of the circle. And the reason why is because every shape in, in Inkscape has its own shape related properties. And in order to be able to work with nodes, you'll have to go to path and select object to path. And now we have a series of individual nodes that we can work with. This is a vector path in its rawest form. So let me delete this and let me grab the rectangle tool. I'm going to hold control and click and drag. And if you notice, we have our rectangle based transformation handle. So I could take this handle up here and make the corners of this rectangle rounded if I want to. And if I go to the nodes tool, you can see we don't have nodes, but if we go to path object to path, now we have a simple node based path that we can work with. And let me get rid of that one. And as one more example, I will show you the stars option. So I'm going to choose the stars and polygons tool. I'm going to select the star option and I'm going to add a bunch of corners there, maybe something like 12 and I'll click and drag. And now we have our star based transformation handles. Again, if I go to the nodes tool, we don't have nodes yet. We just have the simple star based transformations and I can continue editing this as a star. If I want to, I can go in here and remove corners or add corners and I can continue changing the properties of the star. But once I convert it to a path, now it is just a simple vector based path. And the final example we will work with today is text. So I'm going to grab my text tool and I'm going to click on the canvas to place a cursor and I'm just going to write text. Now, if I go to the nodes tool, you'll notice I can't edit this like it's a vector path because as far as Inkscape is concerned, this is still an editable text object. But if I convert this to a path, now we have editable nodes. But the problem we have now is based on the font and the way it was constructed, we have a lot of overlapping paths here. So if I go back into the outline display mode, you can see the way that this font was created. And this won't be true with every font. This is just for this font and many other fonts. But for this font in particular, we have a lot of overlapping paths here. So to fix that, we could just select the object and go to path and select flatten. And now you will have a simple node based system. And if I go back into my normal display mode, you can see we have regular paths and we can just edit this as if this were any other object. Inkscape no longer recognizes this as text. These are just now vector. It's a series of vector nodes and paths. So I think that should do it for this introductory lesson on nodes and paths in Inkscape. If you want to learn more about this and how Inkscape works in general, be sure to check out my Inkscape Masterclass. It's a collection of over 80 videos where we go over all of the tools and features in Inkscape and I explain what they are and demonstrate how they work, kind of like how I did in this video. 
We even have a private community where you can ask questions and get help from me anytime you need it. I'll have some information about that down below if you want to check that out. And as always, thanks for watching.